as long as you understand the reality that you will be used as cannon fodder, then if you're at peace with that, I'm not going to stop anybody. I can't. These are the previously untold stories of the British citizens who went to Ukraine to fight Putin's invasion. Everyone knows the risk of being out there. And no one's going to die unnecessarily. They wanted to help. But the reality was very different. It was chaos, absolute chaos. Dying senselessly, it's not brave, it's stupid. It was as sudden as it was brutal. Ukrainians woke up to find themselves plunged into the midst of war. Explosions and air raid sirens ringing out here in Kyiv and cities across this country. As Russia launched a full-scale invasion on multiple fronts in the early hours of this morning. The early images of Russia's invasion of Ukraine shook the world. Within days, Ukraine was calling for international support. Робіться цілеспрямовано, згуртовано, безперервно. Всі друзі України, хто хоче приєднатися до захисту, приїжджайте. Ми дамо вам зброю. Hundreds, possibly thousands from the UK heard that call and responded. Ben Atkin was just 18. I was in Glasgow at the time and uh, what went through my mind was I wonder when the next flight is. Um, my dad was supported with obvious concerns. Um, my friends, um, they think I've got a screw loose. There were serious concerns from his friends and family. That I'd be coming back and I'd be branded a criminal um, for obviously joining the Legion. The only other concern which no politician can address is the fact he didn't think I'd come back. And that's not something anybody can prepare their parent for. Did you think you might lose your life? I thought it was highly likely, yes. And then the UK Foreign Secretary said this. Absolutely, if people want to support that struggle, I would support them in doing that. For me, that was just the green light. That was like, okay, uh, these are my dad's concerns regarding this. Um, it looks like obviously our government supporting this. The government backtracked on Liz Truss's statement slightly, saying only people with military experience should travel to Ukraine. Ben had none, but his mind was made up. If I'm willing to risk my life, I'm more than willing to risk a prison sentence to do the right thing. Ben flew from the UK to Poland, where he crossed the border into Ukraine. The war was in its third week, and Russian forces were pushing towards the capital, Kyiv, in the north and strengthening their position in the east and the south. Cities across the country faced a constant barrage of strikes. Ben was on his way to a border checkpoint in the west with the intention of joining the Foreign Legion. What we were told is we'd be given our own firearms training, we'd be given body armor, we'd be provided helmets, and um, we'd basically be doing civilian focus roles. And when we actually got to one of the Legion sites, we were told we were surrendering our passport. Our three-month tour would be most likely three years. And from that point onwards, there was no weapons training. So you'd expected a three-month service, yeah, and they um, suddenly said three years. How do you respond to that? So look, this is what I've done, uh, basically, to get here. This is what I'm here to do. This is what you've set out. And the contracts, basically, you've basically asked to sign aren't anything like what you've uh, made out to be and they, the response was nobody would join otherwise. I was told in 24 hours you go to war, um, so my station was going to be Donetsk. The eastern front of Ukraine was a Russian stronghold, with Donetsk on the front line of the war. And 70 miles south was the besieged city of Mariupol. Even the most experienced fighters would be reluctant to go there, even someone like Curtis. You know, I thought that some of my training could be used in, you know, in the right ways to help out the Ukrainian people. The 30-year-old former Royal Navy engineer was exactly the kind of person Ukraine had hoped would join their fight. When the war broke out in February, he responded immediately. After Liz Truss, was it Liz Truss, the lady? Yeah, Foreign she, Secretary. Foreign Secretary put you know, it out on the news that people could go. Um, I made the decision 
that I would like to, you know, help out one way or another, whether it's humanitarian or fighting, I wasn't sure. And that, in a way, crystallised your decision to go? Yes, essentially, yes. His first stop was an army base in Yavariv, where foreign fighters were gathering. What he found there alarmed him. There was absolutely no structure to it at all. Nothing at all. There was a Ukrainian officer that was in charge of the whole entity and left to our own devices essentially for the first few days. There was a lot of young guys who have never been in any um, serving military, had no any military training at all. You know, kind of Call of Duty type people. And it was chaos, absolute chaos. Basically we're here to, uh, help. A lot of the civilians taking photos, putting things on TikTok with their locations, um, with no operational security at all. That, you know, anyone what's been in any basic military should already know about, especially in the you know, current war zone. Had some military checkpoints to get through. Ben had no idea about the chaos at that base, but if he decided to go to Donetsk, it would be his last stop before the front line. They were going to be taking us to Yavariv actually at 5 p.m. later that day. And there was like, you know, here's basically your bus. You either take it in a couple of hours or basically you move on. And that seemed for all of us a little bit too intense, especially giving up your passport, a sovereign document. That's our lifeline. As Ben was debating whether to go, Curtis had made his mind up to leave. Um, a few of the training team, including myself, got together on an evening and said, you know, this is absolutely abysmal. And pretty much in unison, 150 of us stood up and left. And not 10 hours after that, the base got hit by 30 cruise missiles. from Lviv in western Ukraine for the previous 17 days of war, a relatively safe haven until today. An enormous airstrike on a military base near the Polish border killed at least 35 people. That's where you would have been. It was hit. A lot of people died. Do you remember hearing about that? What, what you felt when you heard about that? I felt like I dodged an airstrike. Um, but everyone was quite on edge. Um, and when we found out early hours in the morning it had happened, it was more of like, shit, that could have been us. I feel selfish to worry about what could have happened to me when it did happen to a lot of people. And my concerns are with basically the legionnaires who decided to stay at Yavariv and Basically, when we left, we exchanged phone numbers with a few of them, and we didn't hear back from anybody. How many people do you know who you haven't been able to contact since? Four. For Ben, the prospect of fighting in the war was over. He decided to help the humanitarian effort instead. Turns out you could do a whole lot more good without carrying a firearm and in camos. But for Curtis, the fighting was just beginning as he made his way from Yavariv to join a unit on the outskirts of Irpin. The city had been under intense Russian fire for days before he arrived. The biggest challenge was the support from the Ukrainian military, which just was non-existent. All the intelligence before any kind of operations that we did do was non-existent or very lacking. We would turn up on an operation, getting told there's 20 Russian soldiers and maybe one or two vehicles, and there'd be 60 Russian soldiers and eight or 10 vehicles we're up against. Isn't that just war, though, that, you know, unexpected things happen? You could say it's just war, but it's the very basics that should be, you know, followed and, you know, given to us to help us fight to the best of our abilities. So what did you do? Fight, fight and fight until someone's either going to die or it's going to be you. He even found himself buying essential provisions, like food, for himself and other soldiers. Not even enough to sustain, you know, normal life, never mind fight. So how much do you reckon you spent? In the thousands. Wow, of your own money? Yeah. After two months in Ukraine, Curtis's frustration became too much, and he headed back to the UK. I believe that, you know, the time I was out there, nearly 70 days I was out there, I believe I've only done 25% of what I want to do out there. And the 75% of it's all bureaucracy and waste of time through the Ukrainian paperwork and bureaucracy issues. But 
But despite all that, he still hopes to go back. What do you actually want to do out there? What is driving you? You know, Ukraine's very close to, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's at the heart of Europe. It's, it's similar to, you know, to any other country, and Russia's not going to stop there. They, you know, they're, they're going to push the way through, and it's got to be stopped in its tracks before it reaches our shores. It's a very different world. It's a very different kind of war to anything everybody out there's experienced, even some guys who have been to Afghanistan, Iraq, numerous times. It's a completely different kettle of fish. Do you regret ever thinking of joining the Legion? No, because I wouldn't have been in a position to help people if I didn't go and make that mistake. And doing the work I did, I feel that I made a difference over there, and it's good enough for me. Do you feel there was a certain naivety about your expectation of the Legion, that you expected to be sort of looked after in a way that you weren't? A hundred percent, yes. Um, I did assume you know, this was going to be set up alongside Ukrainian armed forces. We were given a representation of the Legion, and then when we were shown with the actual Legion, they contrasted each other quite starkly. The Foreign Office told us they don't know exactly how many British citizens have travelled to Ukraine, nor how many have lost their lives there. But they urged all UK nationals not to travel there and for those already there to leave if they can. We contacted the Ukrainian Embassy for comment, but none was provided.